Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Well, I was just preparing for an experiment and I came across this book which was given to me uh, by Stoyan Sarg who stayed with me in 2014 and it is his uh, Magnus Opus, uh, Basic Structures of Matter, Supergravitational uh, Unified Theory. Um, and uh, you can see it was given to me uh, December the 6th, 2014. Uh, but when he gave this to me, um, we discussed a lot about uh, the ECAT the, at the time. And uh, he gave me this uh, drawing, which I think he's shared in other forums, of how he considered it working. And uh, on the left, you have the reactor system itself. And this is, is his consideration um, uh, for the process uh, and how he believes it was working. And he said there's two fundamental things that you must have in place. Uh, so you've got your 62 and 64 nickel uh, isotopes here. Um, these are the uh, very heavy, uh, as it were, high mass uh, nickel isotopes. Uh, and they are um, also uh, bosonic. Um, and then the hydride, or in this case he's calling it the metal hydride, and he says absolutely fundamental to the process would be a beta emitter. And so what he's saying is that the metal hydride um, takes uh, the H2, goes to uh, H, uh, uh, and then this goes to the Rydberg state. And the way you achieve that is by RF generator or an HD arc. And if you recall in my um, presentation in Copenhagen, I talked about how uh, the Rydberg clusters, uh, uh, which um, one example he gave was the strands that you get in a, um, a plasma ball, uh, like a Tesla plasma ball, are also uh, termed as being um, exotic vacuum object uh, uh, clusters, uh, um, charge clusters. Uh, by other authors. So he's saying to create these you need an RF generator or an HV arc to create your Rydberg state uh, uh, hydrogen which uh, forms into clusters and then he says you need beta particles. Now this is very interesting. At the time he said pot potentially that it might be that he was adding 63 nickel um, but um, if we look at this today in the uh, context of what we know now um, the beta here uh, could be being provided by uh, potassium carbonate if that was in with the original mix or you know even potassium itself uh, if it was uh, provided in the original mix with the uh, carbon if it was in the form of um, uh, you know natural carbon from plant matter uh, having the 14 carbon to produce a beta emitter uh, and the potassium 40 producing the beta emitter which it does anyway but it's really not a very high rate uh, of uh, emissions like something like 10 to the 9 years or something like that you can look that up um, but if the uh, dense <laughs> evos the exotic vacuum objects the charge clusters are able to synthesize by getting electrons to the high, high enough uh, density, uh, of which certainly shoulders would say they're, they're at solid densities, um, and at high enough temperatures, and one would consider them to be at extremely high temperatures, they're effectively a plasma pinch on themselves, they're like a mini tokamak, um, uh, they could synthesize the cold neutrinos, and the cold neutrinos would go into your carbon or your potassium 40 and release the beta process that would allow the process to occur as is detailed here without specifically adding say nickel 63. So he, he, he thought the only way that this could be possible is if you were effectively creating charge clusters and what you can do uh, it would seem is uh, by getting the environment right uh, there's a potential for creating the actual uh, cold neutrinos that stimulate beta emission from uh, uh, beta radioisotopes that would ordinarily have a far higher um, half-life and that this would trigger the fusion process. 
So uh, there you go. Um, I just thought I'd put that out there. I, I need to be fair to Stoyan Zarg, who gave this to me in um, on December the 6th, 2014. Um, and that was his hunch. And I think we might be getting there. <laughs>